Let me give you an update on Anheuser-Busch. Remember what I told you last, was it last week? When did this Anheuser-Busch thing happen? Last week or the week before? Uh, seems like 26 years ago, but it I does, think it was maybe two weeks ago. Okay, two weeks ago. So I did a show on TV, and we talked about it here on radio, that I told you about the human rights campaign and something that they uh, call CEI, the Corporate Equity uh, or Equality, Corporate Equality Index. And I told you that some of these companies are feeling like they're held hostage because the Corporate Equality Index is something that is run and it's wildly leftist and extreme. And it calls companies and says, hey, where's your advertising pro-gay, lesbian, anti-American, all this stuff? Where is that? And if you're not doing it, they bring your score down. And every year they give each company a score and they also give a list of demands. As we told you, these are the people that called the insurance companies uh, about a month ago and said, hey, our, our new index is coming out in this summer, and you better not be funding anything with, or um, uh, giving insurance for any kind of fossil fuel company. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have some problems. And we know this approach works. They, they use it in politics all the time. There's a bunch of groups that have scores that rate politicians based on their voting records. Mm -hmm. And they say, if you vote the wrong way on this, we're going to lower your score, which means that voters and groups will look at you and say you're less conservative or less liberal, depending on what right. the goal is. Uh, except this one is, is more than just we're going to vote against you. Right. This one is, I believe, a terroristic threat. So listen to this. Pro-LGBT uh, advocacy organization is pressing now Anheuser-Busch to publicly proclaim its support for transgender people. They have been facing a groundswell of negative consumer sentiment since enlisting transgender figure Dylan Mulvaney to advertise Bud Light beer. I talked to a friend of mine in Seattle last night. He said, uh... I was sitting in at a bar. No, uh, he said I was sitting at a bar. And he texted me from the bar. He said, Glenn, this is out of control for Budweiser. He said, they're out of every other beer. They have plenty of Budweiser. No one will order it. In Seattle? Are you kidding me? Now, maybe it's the one conservative bar where everybody who votes for a Republican is in that bar, but that's remarkable. How about, you know, Stu Leonard's? Remember this from yeah, up yeah, the yeah. Northeast, a grocery store chain? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. How would you think of it? I don't, certainly don't think of it as a conservative store. I don't think of it as anything. Oh, really? It's a grocery store. It's a grocery store, but I think it has a little bit of a... A uh, Trader Joe's ish lean, okay, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, okay, uh, you yeah, know, like you organic, healthy. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Uh, that's you know, fresh dairy. Like, that's how I think of it. I never used to think that fresh dairy meant that you were politically left. <laughs> no, but, but but you know what I mean. No, like, I know, I know, I know. You wouldn't know. say it's like it's more hippie, right? It's not yeah. gonna you know maybe carry every like sugary cereal you Correct. expect at some of the other places. Bastards. New, a New York Post reported that regional supermarket chain Stu Leonard's had seen Bud Light sales drop by fifty. Percent, and that sales of Coors Light had increased by roughly an equal measure. They are done. They are done. I mean, they're not. They can't be. What does that mean? Done? Not done. Budweiser? How you Bud Light was the number one selling beer. Yeah, right. I mean, you cut that by fifty percent. That's something you bank on. Oh yeah, that's it's it's incredibly dramatic. You know, I was at a wedding this weekend, and you know, you go up to the bar, and they have the, the selection of. No, I don't know what you mean when you go up to the bar, but thank you you're, for you're reminding literally me. Literally an, an alcoholic. alcoholic. <laughs> literally an alcoholic. You definitely know what it feels like to walk up to a. So yeah. you go to, and they had the, the bottles all sitting out there, and I was looking at them, and you know, like I've said this before, we do these power hours. Yeah. on Stu Does America a couple Why times a year. I know you earlier? I know. I you missed some I, good times. We would have done some good shows back then. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a blast. Uh, but, you know, I would drink Bud Light because it's it's easy to drink. It tastes yeah, pretty yeah. much like water. You get through it quickly. <laughs> it's 
know, it's that's your goal, right? That's your goal. And a power like a hour, it beer is. that kind of is like water, and I can get through it quickly. Exactly. Why are you drinking it? I that's a good question. <laughs> so uh, you go and you, they have the, the choice of beers there, and I looked at them, and like normally I probably would just pick, pick Bud Light, and it wasn't even through like a boycott choice for me. It was like, you know, just give me a Miller Light. I don't want to have a conversation right now about Dylan Mulvaney. Like I, that, that was really the thought that went through my head. I, if I get a Bud Light, I'll be carrying around and someone will go, hey, Dylan Mulvaney, what do you think about? And I was like, I don't want to have that conversation. <laughs> and it's like, I think a lot of people will go I through that so because even if you don't want to necessarily, you don't care about a boycott, you don't want to be making a statement about transgenderism we with your drink choice. want less politics, yeah. not more. Yeah. I mean, I. We used to talk about social things on this program, and programmers would say, oh, nobody cares about the social. We're talking politics here. Mm, and yeah. at the time, they were right. Now, everything is political. Absolutely everything. Beer is political. So anyway, uh, they wrote a letter, and they said, in this moment, talking to Budweiser, it is absolutely critical for Anheuser-Busch to stand in solidarity with Dylan and the trans community. However, when you were faced with anti-LGBTQ and transphobic criticism, nobody's transphobic. We'd like people to stop jamming it down our throats and putting it in our schools. Anyway, um... Uh, the actions of Anheuser-Busch demonstrated a profound lack of fortitude in upholding its values of diversity, equity, and inclusion to employees, customers, shareholders, and the LGBTQ community. This uh, not only lends credence to the hate-filled rhetoric, it exposes Anheuser-Busch to long-term business impacts with employees and customers increasingly looking for steadfast commitment to LGBTQ plus corporate citizens. Uh, they then mentioned that they are doing their uh, new corporate equity index score, and it could hurt their 100%. What are these companies supposed to do? They're all being held hostage. Now, I will tell you, I think if they would say, you know what? We're just not going to be held hostage anymore. Sorry. I don't think they can do it. I really don't think they can do it. I bet you the board is already swayed enough to where it's like, no, we can't lose. We can't lose any money. So they're going to try to play this middle ground and make everybody happy, which won't work. I think if Budweiser stood out and said, you know what? We like the Clydesdales. We like America. We don't have a problem with transgender people, but we're not going to be held hostage by anyone. No, that person that came up with this campaign cut our profits by 50% in one day. She's fired. We're never going down that road again. We're a beer company, not a political company. Play your politics with other companies. That beer would go through the roof, through the roof. Bud would be number one and would have real brand loyalty. How far is that away from what they actually did, though? I mean, they came out with a statement that said, we never intended to get into the middle of a conversation like this. And they suspended the lady who was responsible for suspended. it. Suspended. Now they're being threatened by this Human Rights yeah. Commission. See if okay? they turn around. <laughs> Let's see if they turn around. Yeah. Now they're being threatened. Now they should come out and they should have a corporate statement. We have been threatened by this organization. And what they're threatening is to go after our finances, go after everyone. This is a hostage situation. There is no difference between somebody who does cyber attacks and holds companies' uh, mm -hmm. passwords and money and operations in exchange for money, there's no difference between that and this. They are saying you either comply and do what we say, or we're going to destroy your company. That is terrorism. 
if the first huge company that comes out and says that, everything's going to change. Everything will change.